السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم أولا ونفسي بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون قال تعالى في كتابه وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الوالد أوسط أبواب الجنة إلى آخر الحديث الحمد لله All the praise and thanks due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Peace and salawat upon our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My dear respected brothers and elders in Islam Firstly, I would like to advise myself and those who are present Intaqi Allah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times, at all moments My dear brothers in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with many bounties with many ni'mah and Allah describes them individually with different definitions of all those bounties which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you and me but there is a unique bounty a ni'mah a gift given to you and me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah described when the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described that great bounty Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told that he they are that ni'mah that bounty it is indeed Jannah the description was given for that bounty as Jannah my dear brothers in Islam it is a such a bounty many of us are neglectful or many of us even do not look at that as a Jannah while it is with us in our own home or for some that bounty is being removed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is this great bounty which was described by sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Jannah or Paradise my dear brothers in Islam it is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says with regard to the parents the ni'mah of parents that all of us enjoyed or enjoying today my dear brothers in Islam Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described our parents as Jannah it was asked Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the mother about the father Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Huma jannatukuma Huma istahaba They are your jannah My dear brothers in Islam Do we have any other creation or bounty Described by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as jannah We know what is jannah Ma la aynun raat Wa la uzunun sami'at Wa la khasar ala kalbi batar Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says When you describe jannah No eye had ever seen No heart could ever Ever ponder No ears have ever heard My dear brothers in Islam That is jannah Hear that 
same Jannah is described to our parents. The question remains today. Do we look at our beloved parents as Jannah? Why they are being called Jannah? My dear brothers in Islam, this is what today we fail to understand. The material world that we are engrossed, the material world that we have drowned ourselves, the capital gain that we run behind day and night. My dear brothers in Islam, we have understood the value of monetary gain. We have understood the value of commercial gain. But my dear brothers in Islam, the nature of capitalism, it will bring the value of material and it will remove the value of all other values from our lives. Whether it is our relatives, whether it is our wives, whether it is our children, all these things shown to us as immaterial in comparison to the material gain that you and me run day and night. My dear brothers in Islam, that how today we have failed to recognize the value of our parents. How many of us every day look at our parents and this poor crossing my Jannah standing in front of me, subhanallah. How many of us, my dear brothers in Islam, today we have reached a stage, we find very little time even to greet them on daily basis, even to smile at them in daily basis. A sahabi came to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasul Allah, إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَغْزُوَا وَكَدْ جِئْتُ أَسْتَشِيرُ Ya Rasul Allah, I am intending to go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I came for a consultation with you, Ya Rasul Allah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, هَلْ لَكَ مِنْ أُمْ Do you have a mother? He said, yes, Ya Rasul Allah. One hadith, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, سَبْتَغِ الْعَجْرَ مِنَ اللَّهِ You seek your reward by your mother. The narration, فَالْزِمُهَا فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ تَحْتَ رِجْلَيْهَا Go attack yourself with your mother. Do not leave your mother. Be close to her. Take care of her. Because the Jannah lies beneath the foot of our mother. My dear brothers in Islam, that another Sahabi, a person came and complained to him, to Abu Dhar, that came and complained to him, that my father is asking me to divorce my wife. He said, I am not going to tell you to divorce, but I can narrate to you what my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me. Al-Walidu, awsatu abu abu jannah. Al-Walidu, awsatu abu abu jannah. Parents are the middle door of jannah. If you want, Fadih Khan al you can destroy and demolish this door and you deprive yourself by entering into Jannah or protect them. My dear brothers in Islam, look at the words, the wisdom behind the words of Rasulullah. When he said our parents, our father, he, when we look at him, it should give us the reminder of Jannah. My dear brothers in Islam, why? We know in Jannah, وَفِيهَا مَا تَشْتَرِيهِ الْأَنْفُسِ وَتَلَزُّ الْآيُنِ Subhanallah. Allah when He describes Jannah, Allah says, Jannah is a such a place. Whatever your heart wishes and desires, that will be fulfilled. And when a Jannah He enters Jannah, وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ مَنْ تَنَعَمُوا فَلَا تَبْعَثُوا أَبَدًا a Jannah he enters into Jannah. Angel is giving an announcement. From today, there is only happiness in your life. There is only good news will come to you. And there will be no bad news. There will be no sad news. There will be no bad incident will ever take place for you. When, my dear brothers in Islam, we have parents who have reached the old age. Let us understand this very clearly. That 
we need to do and service them take care of them we need to make sure whatever they need within our ability and capability we must try to fulfill that we must try to take care of that we should not complain we should not look into our wallet our wealth our balance by their brothers in islam that's why they were called as jannah my dear brothers in islam and furthermore the understanding from the words of sallallahu alaihi wasallam my dear brothers in islam that if we need jannah that we need to take care of them we have parents who have reached the old age let us take care of them let us do their khidma let us do their service many of us thinking many of us thinking that my parents are healthy so i don't have to do anything for them but my dear brothers in islam we don't need to wait till they reach the old age let us go back and take care of them a sahabi came to the company of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and told ya rasul allah i came to take the oath of allegiance i take i came to take bayat from you ya rasul allah to make hijra to my great oh rasul allah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he told ya rasul allah when i was coming i came to my grave but i came to take the oath of allegiance on hijrat ya rasul allah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him how is the condition at home he said ya rasul allah i left taraktu abawayya yabkiyan i left my parents why they were tearing and crying because i was separating from them subhanallah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said farji'uhuma you go back home you go back to your parents it is not your monetary gain it is not your hijrat is great you have made your parents cry today go back to them go back to them arhamhuma make them smile make them laugh make them happy kama dukaytuhuma like how you have made them cry my dear brothers in islam how many of us made our parents happy today there are days that we walk out of our home banging the door shouting screaming maybe the mistake from our parents quran says every person will be reborn back to the childhood when they become old they become like children but my dear brothers in islam we made our parents cry a lot it will move the heavens of allah it will bring down the anger of allah it will bring down the punishment of allah whether we are whether we are working who we are where we belong to it is in material parents in quran allah says وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Your Lord, Allah commands you and me to worship Him alone and worship Allah alone and no other creation and further, immediately Allah relates وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Be nice to your parents Be nice, be kind to your parents Take care of your parents My dear brothers in Islam Allah spoke about many ahkam in the Quran we are surprised to see with regard to parents Allah goes detail after detail in Quran explaining how to deal with your parents inna yablughanna indaka al-kibar ahaduhuma aw kilahuma fala takul lahuma uffa wala tanharhuma وَقُلْ رَبَّنَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا if we only understand if we only understand the depth of this ayah we will not even raise our tone in front of our parents allah says if either one of them or both of them either one of them or both of them reach the old age by you فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ do not raise your voice 
rise above them. Do not raise your tone above them. In this place Allah is not talking the words that we use. Allah says do not even use the tone as oath in front of your parents. Subhanallah. And wala tanharuhuma. Do not rebuke them. Do not degrade them. Do not disgrace them. My dear brothers in Islam, their father spent his entire life in upbringing, in feeding, in nurturing, in spending, in take care of you and me. Today we have become qualified personalities. We claim ourselves to be somebody in the society. We are highly educated, affluent or whatever. At times we are shy to introduce this person as our father. There are fathers who cry. My son do not want to describe me as his father. My dear brothers in Islam, in the eyes of Allah he is the most beloved. He is the most honored in the eyes of Allah. My dear brothers in Islam, Allah is saying, وَكُلْ لَهُمَا كَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Talk to them honorably, with respect, with dignity, in front of my boss, in front of my CEO, in front of my head. I am so humble, I am so soft, I am so kind, I am so uh, professionally, my words, that I tie my words in a such a way. But the mother asks, you come with a busy day, did you eat? Look at our reply today. I'm not hungry. Hard reply, a loud reply. No mother, don't force me. This is how we treat our mother. We are disturbing our Creator, remember. My dear brothers in Islam, every word is measured. Every word is being told a day that we shall be asked. Allah is saying, وَقْفِدُ لَهُمَا جَنَاءَ Be humble to them. Lower your wings in humbleness. And وَقُوا رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ الصَّغِيرًا Oh Allah, have mercy on our parents. Oh Allah, be nice to our parents. Be kind to our parents. Make it easy upon our parents like how they were merciful to us. Ask this question today. How many of us in our lives, every day we make fight and salah? How many of us Remember our parents in our dua, wa na'udhu billah. We have to cry blood, my dear brothers in Islam. We have to cry blood, my dear brothers in Islam. We remember our wealth to be protected by Allah. We remember our business to be protected by Allah. We remember our assets to be secured by Allah in our dua. But our beloved parents, who are the reason for our existence on this planet, we do not remember them. We do not find time for them. The other day one brother came and told me, very sad, he admitted his father in the hospital, old, elderly father. A person visited and he came to him and said, at this age, why you need to spend so much money and hospitalize him? My dear brothers in Islam, wealth is more important than the parents. Do we know the incident where the hadith, authentic hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anthawa ma'luk al you and your wealth belong to your father. Where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is a beautiful incident behind this authentic narration, narrated by many muhaddisun. With regard to the authenticity, there are differences of opinion. But most of the muhaddisun, commentators of the hadith say, it is beneficial to narrate the incident in order to bring a change in the lives of the mankind. My dear brothers in Islam, the incident goes that a youngster, a youngster came to the company of Rasul and complained, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, Inna Abi Akhadamali, my father had taken my wealth away, Ya Rasulullah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Call your father. My dear brothers in Islam, one narration, Zamakhtari says, that father was a such a old person, he could not walk, he had a sick on his head, 
and he walked into the company of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam my dear brothers in islam let us let us understand that he came to the company of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he told when he came jibril e amin came to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and told ya rasul allah allah conveys his salam to you allah conveys his salam to you my dear brothers in islam when he said that and he told Allah is saying to ask the father when he came to your company he was saying something he was talking amongst himself within himself ask him what he was talking my dear brothers in islam the father saying the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him that why did you take the wealth of your son he replied ya rasul allah i did not take the wealth i took his wealth to spend on his own auntie and further rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked when you were coming to my company you were saying something within yourself what was that no ya rasul allah it was nothing Ya Rasulullah it was nothing The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied No you must tell me and he insisted and the sahabi said I said some poetry ya Rasulullah The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked what was that He said ya Rasulullah when I was coming when i was coming to your company that i was saying myself a poetry oh my beloved son i was excited when you were born many of us went through this cycle in life we were imagining how our son or daughter will look and he said ya rasul allah i was saying i was excited when you were born i was even excited when you became ill as it that i became ill i had many sleepless nights when i thought about you when you were ill oh my son your happiness was my priority i gave all what i had to you and it was my dream in my life to see you a grown up man a grown up human it was my dream and today you have so that the thing you have reached the age of intelligence and intellectuality and you are a mature person so jaal ta jazai what is that reward that you gave me what is that reward that you gave me what did you award me oh my son today with your rudeness with your harshness with your arrogance you forgot the value of the parents you may you didn't even dignify me to the degree that you dignify your neighbor when rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard this when rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard this subhanallah he was moved by the words of his father he told it comes in another narration according to zamakhshari the father said ya rasul allah there was a time my son was by father kali he was weak i was strong he was a fakir and i was a wealthy person i gave all what i had to him today 
I am weak, he is strong. I am poor, he is wealthy. He is be- has become stingy, our fool Allah. When Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard the words of this elderly person, he heard his son from his chest. He heard this child, this son from his chest and he told, Anta wa ma'luka liyabi, you and your wealth belong to your father. Whatever you have belongs to your father. And my dear brothers in Islam, the Makhshari narrates that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whichever person will hear this incident on this planet will cry. It is true. We are moved today to hear this, which happened 1400 years back. Let us ask ourselves, how do we evaluate our parents? How do we value our parents? My dear brothers in Islam, Wais bin Amir was a tabi'i. He could not meet Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he was in the service of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was in the service of his beloved mother. He Allah inspires Rasulullah. There is a person called Uwais bin Amir from Yemen. He had leprosy and he was cured from leprosy. He lived in a place. Then he had moved to Karan and he cannot come and see you because he is in the service khidma of his beloved mother. Hamalatuhu ummuhu wahnan ala wahn A mother carries a child Difficulty upon difficulty She sacrifices all what she has Before birth, before we were born She was a beautiful, pretty person Now, my dear brothers in Islam We know a mother When she starts giving birth She sacrifices her beauty Her ability Her health Many sicknesses follow her Due to her body weakness, that's what Quran is saying. Hamalatuhu ummuhu wahnan ala wahan. His mother carried him weakness upon weakness, weakness over weakness, difficulty over difficulty, sacrifice all what she had in her life to make us today what we are. My dear brothers in Islam, this Sabi'i, he was not a Sahabi, he could not meet Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Umar ibn al-Khattab, Ya Umar If you meet a person If you meet a person called Wais bin Amir al-Karani You tell him what I told and there are narrations to convey the salam and he told Umar you tell him to make it still far for you because he is a person لو أقسم على الله لا أبره when he takes the oath in Allah Allah the heaven will move to fulfill his requirements subhanallah he was not a sahabi my dear brothers in Islam this sahabi this tabi'i one day came to Medina Umar radiallahu anhu was asking all the people of Yemen he is always been Amir amongst you. Then they said, Ya Rasulullah, today he has come. Umar radiallahu anhu. Rasa towards always been Amir. Goes to him. Are you always? My Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described you. Did you have leprosy? He said, yes. Now you are cured to the, except to the size of a ring or a coin, dirham, that you have a mark of leprosy. He said, yes. And he said, you have a mother that you, you were in her service and you could not come and see Rasulullah. He said, yes. And he said, my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told to tell you that to make istighfar for this Omar, to seek repentance to this Omar. And will you please do istighfar for me? To get Omar radiallahu anhu who will be called from all the domes of Jannah, subhanallah. So Umar radiallahu anhu begging for a tabi'i to make a stighfar for him. And he made dua to Umar radiallahu anhu. My dear brothers in Islam, there are many incidents mentioned about Waysh bin Amir. But then listen to you and me. 
that the sacrifice that we do, nothing important to us, how we accept our parents, let us go back to them, let us talk to them. Some of us have lost our own parents. One Sahabi asked Ya Rasulullah, have I fulfilled? Is there any right or obligation upon me to fulfill upon my parents after their death? Yes, O my Sahabi replied by Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you may dua for them, you may continuous dua for them, you may istighfar for them, you cry for them in front of Allah. And not only that, you honor the friends of your father. Even that is part of the duty that which we need to fulfill. The friends of our father, relatives of our father, the close associates of our father, we need, we need to respect and value them. Respect a mother, respect a brother, elders in Islam. Today our parents are amongst us. Some of our parents are moved into the mercy of Allah. That a dua of a pious son will change the abode of our beloved parents. And let us turn to Allah. Make dua for them. Make dua for our parents who are living. And make dua for the entire mankind. Make dua for everybody. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ikhlaq to practice.